Guilty Gear Strive. Finished the beta. Developers got a lot of feedback. And uh, now they're talking about it. Then there's a lot of things in here that I've wanted to talk about for quite some time. And hopefully my internet won't go out! And we can discuss it. So, uh... We can find out what's going on in the, in the behind the scenes of Guilty Gear Strive, what's potentially going to be changing. I'm gonna give you some of my impressions on what's going on because there is some interesting shit that is said in here and I kind of stopped reading a bit of it myself. And there's also a lot of feedback from the community that is... I think is good quality feedback of what's going on. So, uh... Let's take a look. First of all, let me mention this a little bit before. Uh, is this the first time you played a Guilty Gear game? Only 5% said this was their first Guilty Gear game. 95% of Guilty Gear players were already familiar with the Guilty Gear series, which makes sense. Even though Guilty Gear is such an ingrained aspect of the FGC and the anime side of the fighting game community, like almost anyone that has played fighting games over the past 10 years knows what Guilty Gear is in some fashion, or has tried a Guilty Gear game at some point. This goes to show you how much Guilty Gear is going to struggle to break out of its, its sort of nuanced anime shell, right? Even though it's like, it's hyper anime, it has its own characters, it's not, it has the problem where it's not a game that is revolving around a giant franchise like, I don't know, Bleach or Dragon Ball or Yurutsuka Doji or <laughs> something like that. Over 50% of the people said that Guilty Gear is their favorite fighting game. That makes a lot of sense, all things considered. That makes a lot of sense that a lot of already existing Guilty Gear players are the ones that are trying out the beta and are ready to play more. Most character used ranking, and I am not surprised by this at all, Saul Bad Guy is always Mr. Ungabunga the character at 33% and Kai being uh, always the plain white bread character that he is. He's just, I think Kai looks really cool in this game, but he is just very focused. Like this is our straight shot kind of character. This is what he do. Uh, most requested character, and I've known this for quite some time, that Bridget in Japan for years. I, I I even remember this back when Guilty Gear uh, Exard was in location testing. The most popular character in Japan was Bridget. That he's still the most popular Guilty Gear character, and it's been a very long time since Bridget's been in anything. So I'm not surprised by this one at all. Uh, I think Johnny being second is is also not a big surprise. And Ramlethal getting third is a is a big surprise to me. I didn't think that many people liked Ramlethal that much. Who knows? Maybe there's a brand new Exard character that might actually make it into the game and Leo will come back. Won't you be happy if Leo comes back? But of course, of course, the rest of the world, the greater majority of places across this wonderful Mother Gaia that will be purchasing Guilty Gear Strive all want Biken in the game. Biken and, wow, Biken, Johnny, and Dizzy respectively? Completely undisputed. Biken, Johnny, Dizzy. Bike and Johnny Dizzy. Bike and Johnny Dizzy. And I'd say, of course, right, everyone stands the shit out of Biken. I've, I will say I have never been an absolute defender of Biken gameplay, but I've always loved her character. And before you guys go immediately to two giant examples being her beautiful eyes, I'm sorry, her one eye. I always thought Biken was one of my favorite female characters just because of how badass she is. She's got one arm, she's got one eye, uh, she looks like she's been through hell, she's got a grappling hook, she fights with one arm, like, I always, I've always thought this character was like, wow, this, this is a, this is a crazy character design. To be honest, those two giant character aspects only really showed up in Guilty Gear XR, those weren't really there. Uh, her visual design was quite a bit different in the previous games. But either way, I think Biken's like one of the coolest characters in Guilty Gear. So would I like her to show up? Fucking of course. Would I like her gameplay to be changed? Fucking of course. This is one of those rare situations, chat, where usually gameplay for a character completely sells me. And while I think Biken is one of the coolest female fighting game characters in my personal opinion, I have always thought her alpha counter style gameplay has always been kind of weird. They definitely expanded upon that in Guilty Gear XR in many ways, but um, it is what she is. The evaluations for each aspect of Guilty Gear Strive. So, between one being very bad, two being bad, three being average, four being good, and five being very good, so one being no buenas and five being hella buenas. The thing that sucked the most, according to everyone, was the online lobbies, and I completely agree. The, the lobbies were, uh, terrible. The worst. I don't even know. How did the lobbies get worse? The visuals of Arc System Works lobbies are one thing, right? I'm, you're not gonna get me to knock the visuals of Arc Sys lobbies. They're cool between 
Dragon Ball and Blaze Blue stuff and Blaze Blue Cross Tag and Guilty Gear, right? They're cute and they're interesting and they have these funny little goofy elements, right? But I've always had an issue with their functionality because it felt like so much of those lobbies, I'm not actually doing stuff that wants me to be in the lobby and not actually fighting people. Ultimately, the, the lobbies in modern Arc System Works games, I have a big issue just because they're all fluff and flash, but no function, very limited function. And now the lobbies in Strive are no fluff and flash. Shit looks worse than Habo Hotel. And now they lose all their function too. What the hell happened? Now it's nothing. So this should be, this shouldn't even be a 1.5. This should be like down here. It's terrible. Shout outs to Haba Hotel, by the way. UI and HUD design is the second lowest. I think I agree with that. The UI definitely needs some more pizzazz. It needs to feel more Guilty Gear and less like it looks like an iPhone game or a phone game. Quality of the online matches I feel is way too high. This being a two and a half on a scale of five. Get the fuck out of here. I think people are being way too nice. I think this is a beta and people were able to connect to people close to them. So their impressions of a delay based netcode at this point are good, right? That shit is good. Once those people start dispersing, that delay based netcode is really going to rear its head, which is why Guilty Gear actually installing rollback netcode. That is happening. We don't know how good that's going to be. There's going to be another beta for that most likely eventually. So it is what it is. I think this deserves to be lower, but for the sake of going forward, I can only have hope because they are making change, which is great because this was the one company that we needed a big change here. Music is fantastic. Whatever you feel about the music is going to be super personal, but in terms of music quality and destroy diet, it's great, man. They already have a few super memorable tracks. Um, I think this should be a five. I think this would actually be. And yeah, character animations and visuals. We are talking about one of the most shining pinnacle examples of fighting games. The things that I love about fighting games chat, where you dial everything up to 11. The chart only goes to 10, but what do you do about sound effects, hit confirms? What do you do about the, the impact of each hit? Oh, you go even further, right? Giant hit sparks. Everyone complained in Marvel 3 that the hit sparks were too big. The hit sparks are so distracting in this game. How are they so bad? Play the game for an hour and a half and you don't even notice the hit sparks anymore. I am very much in the boat and not everyone will agree with me, that the more visually splendorful you can make your fighting game to grab people's attention is good. I uh, completely agree with this shit. But how would I compare the visuals of this to Dragon Ball Fighters? This game looks much better than Dragon Ball Fighters on a technical level. Dragon Ball Fighters actually tries to recreate the Dragon Ball aesthetic, which in all honesty isn't that hard because Dragon Ball character designs are pretty simple. Executing the Toriyama style has been done since the PS2 era. It's just that these guys are doing it and taking it to the Arc Sys level, the Arc System Works level. This this looks even better, right? The characters in this game and the animations they have are just, for anyone that doesn't understand animation, uh, these guys aren't even animating on twos. They're animating on friggin' ones in some situations, which is so many more frames of animation that you need to, uh, that you should be adding for some cinematic stuff that you, what are you even doing? Why the hell is this game animated on animated on ones at times? which means that there's just more natural frames of animation in between each thing. That's crazy to me. Uh, this game definitely looks better than anything that they've put out before. But I do think that some of the art design of Guilty Gear Strive with like the very faded look of some stages, lack of contrast on on some, we're going for a feel and instead of like the, vis uh, the, the visuals are gonna accompany our feel. The snow stage is a good example where everything is desaturated. I don't. I feel like they can they can reach a balance instead of having the screen be terribly desaturated. I hope they find that balance because the desert stage and the snow stage are ones that are like, oh, this stage is really orangey and kind of th this color just dominates the screen. And then in the snow stage, it was obviously gray and white. I feel like Guilty Gear XR does a bit better in terms of that situation, but that can absolutely change. Uh, and then the battle system getting about a three and a half. And I'll agree, I really think Guilty Gear Strive is a lot of fun, but I, I completely agree with where this is. In fact, I think I voted for three out of five when it comes to the battle system. It's gonna have legs. People are gonna discover crazy shit because the, the, the core systems of Guilty Gear Strive and how the RC system works now is so much, there's so much more utility to it than before. That came at the cost of unique character abilities. 
that came at the cost of these these traits that some of the Guilty Gear characters had before that aren't really necessary anymore because the damn damage is so high. So now people don't have to worry about getting big damage at the cost of things like Gatling, which is the Guilty Gear uh, term for chain combos. I think the big thing that you can do, I like pressing buttons, man. Like, I, I like games that get my hand moving. I, I enjoy that energy. Guilty Gear's always been a game or a series that encourages a lot of that shit, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of button pressing. And this game doesn't as much. All things considered, I'd put this at about a three, and I hope that there's some adjustment, but I think we're gonna read a bit more into that down the line. But I, I like I said, and I'm gonna back up what I have said before about Guilty Gear Strive, I think the game is still super fun. The system itself allows for so much crazy shit to still happen within it that you're still gonna get a way more open fighting game than a lot of the other fighting games, the big fighting games that are out there right now that are specifically trying to limit the things the characters can do for the sake of accessibility. And while yes, this game is going through that, and in comparison to Guilty Gear Xard, people are going to be fucking pissed because Guilty Gear Xard has so much all the characters can do Still, you have a game that you can do a lot of shit, but perspective's a bitch. So the people that have been playing Xard for the past five, six years are probably gonna continue playing Xard. And that makes a lot of sense because a lot of people that played Guilty Gear up until Accent Core and shit pretty much liked Guilty Gear and didn't like Xard. <laughs> Marvel 2 players hated Marvel 3. Marvel 3 players hated Marvel Infinite. This is just the natural way of things. And some people will adopt, some people won't. The whole point of fighting games changing is that they take a risk at changing shit so that they can grab more new audience that is going to replace the audience that drops stuff. Answers to concerns from developers. The game is not intended to be, oh, this is actually echoing what I just said. The game is not intended to be a continuation of previous titles. The basis of our development is to create everything completely new. I hope you can keep in mind as you read on. And I agree with that. There were some like dust loops. There were some things that characters did in Guilty Gear Xard that was very similar to the previous games. It was almost like the goal of Guilty Gear Xard was to execute a 2D fighting game in 3D and have it still be 2D, right? Have it still feel like this is still classic Guilty Gear. So a lot of shit in Xard in many ways that characters could do, they were doing similar shit, right? The characters still had stuff that they were doing from the previous game, the characters that weren't, you know, that were legacy. I, I get exactly what the sentiment because their previous game, and obviously it changed with multiple versions, was the, the goal was just to recreate the 2D game in 3D and it did it, right? They absolutely did it. So regarding the gameplay of Strive, the damage is too high. So Daisuke says, a central idea behind this title is that you can deal big damage without memorizing long combos as was required in previous games. They also made the damage extreme in the beta test to get that idea across. Before the game's release, they'll be adjusting it by carefully looking at player feedback and match results. That's kind of the same feeling I got. I don't, I don't feel like the damage is going to be identical to what we played in the beta test. I don't think Wild Throw is gonna be dropping your ass 40%, right? I don't think that's gonna be happening. I think them testing the playing field. This is a way for devs to sort of address the accessibility issue uh, without finalizing the aspects of the game. Just mess around with it a little bit and see if the results really change. Does this actually change things in terms of character matchups? Does this actually change things in terms of new player compared to slightly not as new player to hardcore player, right? In terms of those those skill bases, those skill gaps, is this going to change it? And the beta test hopefully is going to give them some information on that, if not subsequent beta tests in the future. So I don't mind high damage, right? I don't, I actually would prefer faster rounds instead of longer rounds. But is it, is it painfully clear when a character like Chip gets command grabbed by anyone else that has a command grab and you see more than 50% of his life immediately gone? Wow. This, this game is crazy. This game is crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. Dorito health, that's a good way of calling it. Yeah, Dorito health. I do think that it's not gonna be final and I do think it needs, there needs to be a middle ground in between all this shit. Fewer Gatling combo routes and how Gatling combos are here to the game's combo system from previous games. Uh, in previous Guilty Gear titles, players could cancel many normal moves into their combo paths or parts with relative freedom. In Strive, we made restrictions on this so that it's more difficult to combo into damaging moves from fast, small, normal moves. By doing so, we've introduced a greater emphasis on choosing which normal move you use to start your combo based on the situation and goal at the time. Damage scaling, everything like that. This change makes it difficult to put experience from previous titles to use in Strive, and we've heard 
Many concerns and criticisms from fans in the series. In addition, we've heard the, uh, the option that being able to get a combo simply by pressing each button in order made combos simple, meaning that Guilty Gear Strive is more difficult. And here's my take on it. If you start combos from light attacks, obviously your fastest move, easiest to hit confirm into. This is where Street Fighter 4 sort of ran into a bumpy road as well, and they addressed it in Street Fighter 5. I don't think combos starting from like light attacks and like, you know, power up Gatlings going from, you know, punch to slash to have like right to like, think things starting from low damage to high damage is an issue with Guilty Gear Strive, because I feel like with the way the game presents its damage, you can still have Gatling combos. I, I think this is I think this is an oversimplification. I absolutely agree with everyone that Gatling should come back. Because if it means that you need to start combos from punches, from like light attacks that are fast and hit confirmable, and that you have to specifically start your damage scaling, that those things just need to not nearly do much as much damage that if you kept the damage that this game has with its individual, you know, less Gatling filled combos, then people are going to prioritize that stuff. But if, if you still want to go for safe route stuff and you still want to have your Gatling stuff and it does uh, does less damage than the other shit, I'm OK with that. I'm complete. I think that's way better than removing options from the player. I think having options as the player is what makes fighting games so much fun. And that's one of the things that makes Guilty Gear an exemplary example of what makes fighting games fun is that you have so many options. There's so much shit you can do. So if it means that you need to be a bit more aggressive on some of the Gatling stuff, then just be a bit more aggressive and have it do less damage. Just have it do way less damage than it even did in Guilty Gear x -Hard. But just having that option available should be available, in my personal opinion. So Daisuke responds with, uh, an important concept in this game is placing greater, greater importance on choosing your moves based on the current situation. I agree. I do think it's more difficult in the sense that muscle memory won't really work, but there should be fewer mechanics for new players to learn before they can enjoy playing matches. And this is, this is a part that I think this sort of rhetoric, this is where Arc System Works wants to try to get Guilty Gear out there. This is exactly what happens to fighting game developers where they have a game and they're trying to reach a broader audience. And the number one thing, we what did we do in our previous games? We expanded, we added upon it, we added characters. What do we do in the next game? We, we had uh, genre defining 3D graphics that emulate 2D graphics, the best of its kind, still doesn't sell well. Well, what are we going to do in the next game? Well, we can't just make the graphics. I mean, we're going to make the graphics better, but that's clearly not what it takes to sell. Now we're going to need to do something else. Clearly, it must be the gameplay. And that is where I do not agree. The, the problem with Guilty Gear expanding to to reach a broader audience is not because of its gameplay. It's not. It's not even because of marketing. It's because Guilty Gear is niche as fuck. Guilty Gear is a thing that only really fighting game fans or people associated with fighting games are going to know about, which is a small market. They love it. They love the shit out of it. This is not the way to do it. Stifling what you're, you're able to do with your characters, in my personal opinion, is not the way you tackle this. How do you tackle this? I don't have the answers for everything. I don't. But in the past, I can tell you that the way that fighting games have found a way to expand to audiences and genres outside of its already established user base does have examples in this industry. And the clear defining example is guest characters. Guest characters are the way that fighting games can actually appeal immediately, generate excitement. Will it piss off your core audience because you are putting in a, char a guest character that could take a roster spot of an existing character. Yes, you are. But at the same time, you are essentially, like I said earlier, when you're making a new game, you're sacrificing a bit of the old game, a bit of the old player base to big, build a bigger new player base. It's the same exact shit. You're sacrificing Zappa. So you can stick in The Witcher. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. We're gonna, we're gonna lightning strike Zappa. Here's The Witcher. <laughs> I'm using an extreme example here, right? This isn't even a good example. That's a thing in the past that has worked for a lot of fighting games and has made fighting games be already big to be absolutely bigger. And Tekken is a great example, as well as modern day NRS. I think that what they're doing here is not going to be the thing that is going to expand their player base. I don't agree with it. I don't agree that the simplification of mecha mechanics is not does not have a history of expanding player bases, which is what seemingly seems like their goal. I don't agree with it. So Katano responds, if we think of it in terms of either the game being simpler 
to play in training mode or simpler to play in a match, I would say that Strive values the latter more. In development, we've worked at the concept of making a choice and timing of each and every move important in order to create room for invention and technical challenge for advanced players while also shortening the length of combos and block strings. Naturally, we are continually adjusting what moves combo into what by looking at what game from various, by looking at the game from various viewpoints that goes into not only Gatlings, but follow-up moves, combos in general as well. They're referring to Oki, right? They're, they're referring to what happens after the combo is over. Do you just get stuck in an infinite loop of, oh fuck, I'm dead? I have to guess until I'm dead. That's what they're kind of talking about too. And yeah, I think I think the return to neutral is a thing that definitely should be addressed in, in some of these games that are insanely vortex slash Oki heavy. This may seem contradictory to reduce the length of combos and the restrictions on Gatlings. I believe we can make this happen through a com combination of other mechanics. And yeah, if that means that your RC system, the Roman cancel, the canceling system that Guilty Gear games have, if that is more expansive to allow for more options, being even even more expansive than what it was in Guilty Gear XR, which had a shit ton of stuff that RC could do, then I think that's a good idea, right? I, that I agree with. That I completely agree with. If it means that we need to spend RC in more creative ways to come up with more nutty ass combos, fair game. As long as it's good, right? That, and all that matters is that are these changes good, right? If, if this stuff actually results in things that moments and situations and decision making that is actually more fun. There were many combo routes available. Unfortunately, only a limited number of routes were effective due to extreme damage. Hey, we just talked about that. Our goal in moving forward with development, including our work on overall game balance, is to make a game where each player can have a distinctive play style. And you know what? I'm going to clap my hands again, again, and again. This is an absolute must. This is so important to me, I feel like it's being forgotten in many fighting games right now, is player individuality, not character individuality. No, well, I want to see somebody play Saul Bad Guy a complete different way than someone else plays Saul Bad Guy doing completely different things. That is important to me, so much so that if that means that your your character has unique abilities or your your game has unique mechanics that that allow the players to actually express themselves through the time and the training and the get good in this. If you put in a ton of work, I want to see somebody. I want to see the difference between somebody that has put a 10 hours into uh, a Saul bad guy compared to a dude or do a dude that has put a thousand hours into a Saul bad guy. I want to see that difference. And that's the thing that a lot of classic fighting games have. So, the problem is the game already exists and it's called Revelator 2. I don't disagree with you. Uh, the 3D camera movement disrupts the game pace. I'll disagree on this one. I think doing more interesting stuff with the camera in moments, I, I do not feel that it disrupted the game pace, but I am curious to see what their response to this is. I actually like all the crazy camera shit. But let's see. Uh, compared to previous titles, in this game, we're trying out more da daring 3D camera movement. We've heard some players saying the movement gives them motion sickness. Hmm? While we're working on improving this so that more players can enjoy the game without unnecessary stress, I'd like to continue with this idea of challenging ourselves to include a new camera work never seen before. As of now, we're looking into making this work in a balanced way as a team. Did somebody mix up a translation that a ton of people responded to the camera movement that, yo dog, this shit is sick. And then somehow in the English to Japanese translation, they're like, people are getting sick. Oh no. I'm pretty sensitive to some shit when it comes to frame timing and jarring camera movement in many games. I call games out on that. I'm hoping this is a bad translation. <laughs> Here, here's how you do it. You do it the same way that Killer Instinct did. Uh, you know, level four enders in KI? This is how you fix this problem. Turn it on and off. I don't think the game pace changes because of the camera. I don't. But you just being like, hey, how about the camera just stays at the usual space? It always does and only with limited dynamic movement. Because KI level four enders get all crazy and flashy, but you can just turn it off. How about if this is causing people motion sickness? Just make that there's a neutral camera that you can always go back to. So they were saying how concerns with the camera work such as effect on counter hit impacts the game pace, player inputs, and visibility. I can see maybe player inputs. They probably have to change the buffer system there. As previously mentioned, we are taking survey results to heart and working on improving this so that players can have a more comfortable and fun experience while still trying out new effects. And uh, yeah, it sounds like it's a work in progress, right? Sounds like uh, game's still coming in pretty hot. 
Uh, the user interface. Daisuke wants to explain the ideas behind the user interface during matches, which is quite different in this game. We made it so that the burst icon moves with the health, and it drains in order to minimize the amount of eye movement required to check each gauge. That's your icon and information going down with your health bar. We intentionally made risk gauge less visible to reduce the number of gauges the first time players to be aware of. Okay, well, you just directly contradicted. This is a direct, this is an absolute contradiction. In, in my personal opinion. Minimize the amount of eye movement made gauge less visible. The hit counter is so big because in previous games, it's been difficult to see the number of hits going on due to the character models or vice versa. This is an attempt at fixing that issue. I don't agree with that. I think the hit counter being big and crazy is, is a stylistic choice that I kind of love. I, I kind of love the, the 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 number of hits getting bigger and bigger and bigger and getting amplified and amplified and amplified, not because of less visibility. I like that in terms of like a stylistic choice. Each hit is getting crazier and crazier, like sadistic, like, right? The, almost a Devil May Cry level of insanity building up in the background. If they approached it like that, I think that might actually be cool. But the problem is, is that it's so basic looking and simple. I don't know if I agree with them it being not visible before. I don't know if I agree with that. However, you received many opinions looking critically at the user interface in terms of visibility and design, as of now we're seriously considered everyone's comments. So our team is discussing these critical issues to create the finalized design. That's good. Uh, concern on the online lobby system as errors are planned to develop the rest of the game. This to create something entirely new for the online mode. However, we ran into a lot of bugs and problems during the closed beta test. In addition to fixing those bugs, we'll be taking a new look at the matchmaking system as a whole. Well, that's good. We're working on being able to provide everyone with a pleasant online experience by fixing these issues and creating another opportunity for you to try out the game. We apologize. Well, it seems like they are completely aware about all the bugs. The design. By using 2D pixel art style, 3D avatars and such, the venture is necessary to create new mechanics and fun. It wasn't possible with the 3D avatars we've used previously. While they weren't included in the closed beta test, we'll be showing them off in the next opportunity. We've seen many opinions that the style doesn't mesh well with the world of Guilty Gear. In regards to this concern, I hope you'll look on, I'll be on the lookout for new information as we'll be showing you the new designs that weren't included yet in the closed beta test. I don't care what it looks like, dude. Just make me fight people. Give me a bunch of options when searching for matchmaking. Give me options in terms of my player match rooms, how 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 players are distributed and configured. Get us into matches faster. My, my problem with Arc System Works games is that it feels like they want us to be in, in the lobbies more time than we're playing the game. And I don't, I completely don't agree with that. I think one of the biggest issues that fighting games has is that you're doing too much of not playing the fucking game. Let us play the game. That's more important to me than 2D characters and 3D characters walking around. While that was really cool when it first came out, I don't need it. I have to, uh, absolutely commend Arc System Works in this communication, right? Even though a lot of stuff might be happening to Guilty Gear Strive that you and I don't agree with, or you and the developers don't agree with, I, I actually think that this sort of feedback is a precedent that needs to happen more. I don't think that control of fighting games and their feedback should completely be in the user's hands. I think creating an experience for your players is the whole reason video games exist. You want to fabricate something through gameplay mechanics and visuals and sound that is going to bring people in and not have it be completely created by people that either understand fighting games or don't understand fighting games or have a level of understanding, you know, have been playing them for a week or a year or 20 years. But being aware of what they're saying, being aware of what people are feeling, is important. Guilty Gear Strive is doing that right now. This is this is the same stuff that would happen in the past. They would call these arcade location tests or lock tests that when arcades existed, yes, the, the actual devs of fighting games would throw up a early build of said fighting game. This is the new location test, right? What we're doing here is essentially the, the modern location test. And I think that's good. I think location testing some fighting games technically through betas could have severely helped some fighting games in the past that just came out and might not have resonated with the audiences that they hope. Friggin' Marvel Infinite is a wonderful example of that shit. And I think hopefully some fighting game devs can maybe swallow a little bit of the, the, the design pride that they have, which is, seems that Guilty Gear Strive's devs are doing. They actually really care about their user base. I hope this happens for more fighting games. I hope Namco expresses this in their fighting games in the future. And I hope that Capcom hopefully does this for some of their fighting games in the future too. So this conversation was a joy and we're technically having this conversation directly with the, the Guilty Gear developers on the other side. That is 
I think that's super important. Because there's too many fighting games where it just feels like there is no conversation. So, I'm very much looking forward to see, uh, seeing where Strive goes. We know that's going to have rollback netcode in the future. There's going to be some character trailers this month. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what this game's future is going to be.